Member for Gagetown, Petticodiac. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today as the official opposition's advocate for natural resources. I'd like to refer the Minister to Volume 2 of the 2015 report of the Auditor General and her recommendations on private wood supply. On page 176 in item 4.20, the Auditor General states, and I quote, we, re we review documentation supplied by the department regarding its strategic planning and implementation. We could not identify a documented strategy, goal, or objective for wood supply from private wood lots. Although it has initiated some action related to private wood supply, none were complete. Can the Minister advise the House if this has been acted upon, and can he share the Department's documented strategy, goal, or objective for wood supply from private wood lots? Honourable Minister of Natural Resources. Mr. Speaker, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to answer questions from the new critic from, from, uh, for Natural Resources, for Energy Resource Development. And my Olive Branch is going to be out to him, the same with all other members, to take the opportunity to come meet with us, come meet with staff and get an understanding of, of what's taking place in the department, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the forestry sector is part of our pillars in, the, in our economy, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the agriculture, aquaculture, fisheries and forestry are natural parts of our, 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 our uh, the economy, Mr. Speaker, true pillars of our growth, true pillars of our economy, Mr. Speaker, and very well identified in an economic action plan and some of the activities. They certainly add to economic value in the province, Mr. Speaker, and I'm very proud of the work that our stakeholders are doing, very proud of the sector, very proud of the, the, the industries that are in there, Mr. Speaker. They're reaching for the top and reaching for high goals, Mr. Speaker. Now, in answer to that question, Mr. Speaker, I'd be very happy to take the opportunity to have the member opposite come in and sit with our Department to get some answers, get some understanding of what's taking Prime place. Minister, member for Gatestown, Petticodia. Mr. Speaker, in item 4.21 and 4.22, the Auditor General states. The Crown Lands and Forest Act stipulates that the Department will ensure the wood supply from private woodlots is proportional to that from Crown Land and the yield can be sustained. 4.22, the Department has failed to ensure private wood supplies to the mill is proportionate. They have not planned for, monitored or reported on pr proportional supply since at least the uh, early 2000s. Can the minister advise the House if this issue has been addressed or concerned? The Honourable Minister of Natural Resources. To the member opposite, Mr. Speaker, a lot of those issues are going to be resolved. A lot of those issues that he's bringing to the floor of the legislature, we'll be having an opportunity to talk with them, Mr. Speaker. As a matter of fact, we're doing a, a number of consultation process. I've had a chance to meet with the sector, meet with the industry, meet with, with some of the key stakeholders in the sector, Mr. Speak, Mr. Speaker, and getting the understanding. But you know, Mr. Speaker, there's, I, I had mentioned about being the cornerstone, forestry, Agriculture and fisheries are part of our cornerstone, part of the fabric that makes up our economies, Mr. Speaker. They certainly grow, add a lot to the economies, Mr. Speaker. As a matter of fact, there's about 22,000 people, boots on the ground, working in the woods today, Mr. Speaker. They're, they're right across the province, Mr. Speaker. Very important part of our economy, and every single mill, every single operation, every single woodlot is intermingled, Mr. Speaker. No matter what it is they're doing to produce a fiber that's world class, Mr. Speaker. In the world. It's, it's very, very much of a social part, a so, part of our social fabric, Mr. Speaker. Adds to our economy very well. Time, Mr. <laughs> Member for Gates, South Petit Kodiak. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in item 4.23, the Auditor General goes on to state, although the Department establishes an annual allowable cut, AAC, for sustained yield, it has not it is not based on complete and accurate forestry inventory data and can be as much as 10 years out of date. The department does not use the AAC for planning and measuring effectiveness of its programs. Can the minister advise the House if this issue has been addressed and how complete and accurate the forest inventory data is at this point in time? And can the minister advise the House, are you going to enforce the rules of the Forestry Act? The Honourable Minister of Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's, it's really nice 
to hear from the opposition. They feel that forestry is part of our economic fabric, Mr. Speaker, and I, I agree with the member opposite. He wants to bring these items to the floor of the legislature. But, you know, Mr. Speaker, job creation is our, our, our key targets that you know, remain our top priorities. Investing in health care, investing in education, Mr. Speaker, and the forestry sector are part of that. The agriculture sector are keenly part of that, Mr. Speaker. Same with the fisheries. So, Mr. Speaker, it's, it's very welcoming to hear on the floor of the House that this is important. Like I'd mentioned, Mr. Speaker, 22,000 people work in the forestry sector, Mr. Speaker. You know, it's, uh, you know, we're committed to developing smart policy based on the best science going, Mr. Speaker, and we'll work with the industry, we'll work with the stakeholders to get the best results for the sector, Mr. Speaker. It's a vital part, part of our, our province economy, particularly in rural communities, Mr. Speaker. It's not just in urban centres, but in rural communities all around the province plays a very vital Time role. Minister. With our sector.